So the royal tunic, um, I could go on and on about that all day. Mainly what I, it, it has over 300 threads in one inch, hand, hand spun, hand woven, no machines involved. That's, the, uh, that's pretty much the limit of hand weaving in the world. So again, perfection. There were women whose whole lives were spent as prisoners, basically, very coddled prisoners, uh, who wove this cloth for the king. And sometimes they wove one for months and months and months, and then it was burned as a sacrifice to the sun. Because you always sacrifice what's most important to you. Jesus and other people like that. Um, so this type of cloth, the, the fanciest cloth done by the best weavers is called kumpi. It might be called kumbi or kompi. Anyway, it, it had a category all of its own. It had a word for the best cloth as a concept because these were very textile oriented cultures. You're not going to live in the Andes where it's 50 degrees different from night to day if you're not going to be in a nice warm something. So you have to have a lot of textiles. You carry things in those mountains in bags. You put saddlebags on your yamas. You sometimes you sleep in hammocks. It's all fiber is your solution. Bridges, bridges across the chasms. Look in National Geographic. Do a, a search on the, the bridges in Peru made out of rope that they still keep doing. They make ropes this big around for the ones that go across and then they hang it, you know, and you go across. <laughs> Not for the acrophobic. So this is what the king wore and it could have been worn by Pachacuti or it could have been worn by the next ones, but it, it embodies the idea of Pachacuti because it's so, look at all those patterns and they're not in any order. If you read that it's writing or you read that it's secretly there's an order to it, there's not. There's not. It's meant to be visually wild and chaotic, but perfect at the same time. And it has all the different colors in it. Some of the indigo colors, the blue, have faded. So there was blue in it originally, too. So the king is being shown as all pattern, all possible pattern in the world. I am everything. And some scholars say that each one of these little things represents somebody that they conquered, but it doesn't correlate to the textiles of the people that they conquered. They don't have a little Chimu guy because they conquered the Chimu. They don't have a little, not, you know, they, it's not true. It is, to me, I wrote a whole article on it, um, and that's mentioned. Um, to me, it's all the possible people that you could conquer all possible people in the world. And there's a myth of creation in which the creator God paints or colors all the people of the world and sends them into the underground and they pop up in their proper ethnic place with their proper patterns on. Because all the Andean people, you're from Chinchero, so you have this pattern and you're from, everybody's got their patterns and you know, you're in the marketplace and you know where everybody's from. It's like if I wore a hoop skirt, because I'm supposed to be from Tara land in Georgia. Um, the only two that you can correlate, there are two patterns that do relate. This little one with the checkerboard and this, this one with the diagonal line and the two dots. The, this one is a quotation of an entire tunic that, uh, that people wore. We have examples of them. They're the, mil the high military costume. They've got a black and white checkerboard and a red yoke. So he is calling himself the commander in chief. I've got the whole army, the whole Inca army is interspersed amongst all these other patterns. And the other one, we don't know quite what the person did who wore that diagonal pattern, but there's a whole tunic that's all those diagonals, something highly administrative or something. So basically the message of this is I am the world, <laughs> I have all the potential to conquer all the possible ethnic groups that have their own patterns. And my henchmen, my army and my administrators are interspersed to help me do this. And one thing that's political that the Inca practiced, and one of the reasons they expanded so easily or so well, was that each king 
got the power to be king and nothing else. He got none of the tribute that the previous king had done all the work to get. He had none of the subjects. He had to start, he had to start from scratch basically with his own Inca empire. So Pachacuti you saw on the map, he had the heartland, that's what he conquered, and he kept he, his descendants, everybody but the heir, all his other children and their children, kept getting the money and everything from that area. But his son, Topa Inca, had to go somewhere else and conquer a lot in order for him and his children to have money or wealth. And then the third one was kind of left with the slim pickings. You know, he got the edges, and you're 3,000 miles from here to there. It gets harder to get more land. So they were going to run out of, the, the Inca Empire was going to shoot itself in the foot. But spl it's called split inheritance. You split the wealth of the previous from the power of new conquest. You split the inheritance. It also means that it's, uh, it's nobody, it's not any really so good to kill the heir to the throne because you're like, hey, I'm going to be rich and I'm not going to have to do anything. So it prevents a lot of that court intrigue, you know. Also, the heir to the throne is not designated at birth. They didn't have primogeniture, first son. You had to prove yourself. You had to be a good general, and then your dad would say, okay. So it might take half your, half your life to become the heir to the throne, and by then you could defend yourself if someone wanted to get you. It was a pretty good system for conquest, not a great system for administering afterwards. But I see it in this tunic because he, the, whoever wore it had to envision more people to conquer. You couldn't, you didn't conquer the Chimu, so you're not going to wear having conquered the Chimu. You need to go out and conquer those people way up there in Colombia who might be wearing some weird pattern. So that's my argument about this piece itself. I think it's genius, and it's all done basically, you know, with pattern. 